They calculate risks, rewards, and decide accordingly. But we're not always rational. We rarely behave like Mr. Spock. For most of our decisions, we use fast, intuitive, but occasionally unreliable, System 1. And in a global financial market, that can lead to very serious problems. I think what the financial crisis did was it simply said, you know what? People are a lot more vulnerable to psychological pitfalls than we really understood before. Basically, human psychology is just too flawed to expect that we could avert a crisis. Understanding these pitfalls has led to a new branch of economics, behavioral economics. Thanks to psychologists like Hirsch Schefferin, it's beginning to establish a toehold in Wall Street. It takes account of the way we actually make decisions, rather than how we say we do. Financial crisis, I think, was as large a problem as it was because certain psychological traits like optimism, overconfidence, and confirmation bias played a very large role among a part of the economy where serious mistakes could be made and were. But for as long as our financial system assumes we are rational, our economy will remain vulnerable. I'm quite certain if the regulators listened to behavioral economists early on, uh, we would have designed a very different financial system and we wouldn't have had the incredible increase in, in housing market and we wouldn't have this financial catastrophe. And so when Kahneman collected his Nobel Prize, it wasn't for psychology, it was for economics. The big question is, what can we do about these systematic mistakes? Can we hope to find a way round our fast thinking biases and make better decisions? To answer this, we need to know the evolutionary origins of our mistakes. Just off the coast of Puerto Rico is probably the best place in the world to find out. tiny island of Cayo Santiago. So we're now in the boat heading over to Cayo Santiago. This is an island filled with a thousand rhesus monkeys. Once you pull in, it looks a little bit like you're going to Jurassic Park, you're not sure what you're gonna see, and then you'll see your first monkey and then it'll be comfortable. You're like, ah, oh, the monkeys are here, everything's great. It's an island devoted to monkey research. See the guys hanging out on the cliff up there? Pretty cool. The really special thing about Cayo Santiago is that the animals here, because they've grown up over the last seven years around humans, they're completely habituated. And that means we can get up close to them, show them stuff, look at how they make decisions. We're able to do this here in a way that we'd never be able to do it anywhere else, really. It's really unique. Lori Santos is here to find out if monkeys make the same mistakes in their decisions that we do. Most of the work we do is comparing humans and other primates, trying to ask what's special about humans. But really we, what we want to understand is what's the evolutionary origin of some of our dumber strategies, some of the spots where we get things wrong. If we can understand where those came from, that's where we'll get some insight. If Santos can show us that monkeys have the same cognitive biases as us, it would suggest they evolved a long time ago. And a mental strategy that old would be almost impossible to change. We started this work around the time of the financial collapse. So when we were thinking about what dumb strategies could we look at in monkeys, it was pretty obvious that some of the human economic strategies, which were in the news, might be the first thing to look at. And one of the particular things we wanted to look at was whether or not the monkeys are loss averse. But monkeys, smart as they are, have yet to start using money. 
And so that was kind of where we started. We said, well, how can we even ask this question of if monkeys make financial mistakes? And so we decided to do it by introducing the monkeys to their own new currency and just let them buy their food. So I'll show you some of the stuff we've been up to with the monkeys. Back in her lab at Yale, she introduced a troop of monkeys to their own market, giving them round, shiny tokens they could exchange for food. So here's Holly. She comes in, hands over a token. You can see she just gets to grab the grape there. One of the first things we wondered was just, can they in some sense learn that a different store sells different food at different prices? So what we did was we presented the monkeys with situations where they met traders who sold different goods at different rates. So what you'll see in this clip is the monkeys meeting a new trader. She's actually selling grapes for three grapes per one token. And what we found is that in this case, the monkeys are pretty rational. So when they get a choice of a guy who sells you know, three, three goods for one token, they actually shop more at that guy. Having taught the monkeys the value of money, the next step was to see if monkeys, like humans, suffer from that most crucial bias, loss aversion. And so what we did was we introduced the monkeys to traders who either gave out losses or gains relative to what they showed. So I could make the monkey think he's getting a bonus simply by having him trade with a trader who's starting with a single grape, but then when the monkey pays this trader, she actually gives him an extra, so she gives him a bonus. At the end, the monkey gets two, but he thinks he got that second one as a bonus. We can then compare what the monkeys do with that guy versus a guy who gives the monkey losses. This is a guy who shows up, who pretends he's going to sell three grapes, but then when the monkey actually pays this trader, he'll take one of the grapes away and give the monkeys only two. The big question then, is how the monkeys react when faced with a choice between a loss and a gain. So she'll come in, she's met these two guys before. You can see she goes with the bonus option, even waits patiently for her additional piece to be added here, and then takes the bonus, avoiding the person who gives her losses. So monkeys hate losing just as much as people. Crucially, Santos found that monkeys as well are more likely to take risks when faced with a loss. This suggests to us that the monkeys seem to frame their decisions in exactly the same way we do. They're not thinking just about the absolute, they're thinking relative to what they expect. And when they're getting less than they expect, when they're getting losses, they too become more risk-seeking. The fact that we share this bias with these monkeys suggests it's an ancient strategy etched into our DNA more than 35 million years ago. And what we learned from the monkeys is that if this bias is really that old, if we really have had this strategy for the last 35 million years, simply deciding to overcome it is just not going to work. We need better ways to make ourselves avoid some of these pitfalls. Making mistakes, it seems, is just part of what it is to be human. We are stuck with our intuitive inner stranger. The challenge this poses is profound. If it's human nature to make these predictable mistakes and we can't change that, what then can we do? We need to accept ourselves as we are. The cool thing about being a human versus a monkey is that we have a deliberative self that can reflect on our biases. System two in us has for the first time realized that there's a system one. And with that realization, we can shape the way we set up policies, we can shape the way we set up situations to allow ourselves to make better decisions. This is the first time in evolution this has happened. If we want to avoid mistakes, we have to reshape the environment we've built around us, rather than hope to change ourselves. We've achieved a lot, despite all of these biases. If we are aware of them, we can probably do things like design our institutions, and our regulations, and our own personal environments and working lives to minimize the effect of those biases, and 
help us think about how to overcome them. We are limited, we're not perfect, we're irrational in all kinds of ways, but we can build a world that is compatible with this and get us to make better decisions rather than worse decisions. That's my hope. And by accepting our inner stranger, we may come to a better understanding of our own minds. I think it is important in general to be aware of uh, where beliefs come from. And if we think that we have reasons for what we believe, that is often a mistake. That our, our beliefs and our wishes and our hopes are not always anchored in reasons, they're anchored in something else that comes from within and is different. The news at 10 is just starting over on BBC One, including a report from inside a Syrian refugee camp. Next here, it's film awards season, and the culture show proudly presents The Kermodes. Or on BBC Three, there's comedy with the new series of Impractical Jokers. <laughs>